So this is by far my favorite story to tell. I remember back in October 2018, I was going through so many internal battles that us men just have to face in life, you know? I contemplated walking out of my job with no other options on a literal daily basis. I also contemplated whether or not I should keep my cool or if I should go off on my boss on a daily basis. Most of all, the biggest conflict I had with myself is, is it even worth it to get out of bed today? Is it even worth it to get out of my car and walk into this building where no one appreciates me? Every waking hour of every day, those thoughts were crossing my mind to the point that they were the only things that I ever thought about. Man, I used to dream and fantasize about walking out of that building and living life on my own terms. But right when I thought it couldn't get any worse, bro, like when I thought things could not get any worse, that was when the unthinkable happened and I actually had to act on my thoughts that I had every single day. What's up, man? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so that you can better yourself every single day and live life on your own terms. On this channel, I talk about saving money, increasing your income, getting out of debt and various personal growth topics. And I relate these back to my own experiences so that you can get motivated. Let's get into the video. So just a little bit of background for you. Two years ago, I worked a very high paying job. I was 22 going on 23 and I was pulling in just over $80,000 a year. And look, I know that sounds like a really good thing, but I hated my life there, bro. Just to keep it brief, I had to work every day for 12 hours a day minimum without any day off in sight for months at a time. I got a good three to four hours of sleep per day. On a good day, I might've gotten five. And I was in a leadership position where I was disrespected daily by my direct reports, my peers, and my bosses, and I'm not quite sure which of those three are the worst to get disrespected by. Anyways, bro, I was overworked and underappreciated. I was burnt completely out, and I still used every ounce of energy I had and every muscle in my body and every focal point that I had. I put everything into that job just to make those who didn't even appreciate me happy just to not get fired because that place was cutthroat bro and i dealt with all this for a prolonged amount of time all because i didn't know my worth that's pretty much all you need to know but if you want some more background on how much i hated my life on my first high paying job go watch that video right after this i'll link it up here and in the description so you're probably wondering if everything that i just talked about was the unthinkable that i mentioned earlier no Actually, what I just mentioned just now was that that was just the norm. That was just the day to day flow of things. The unthinkable happened when I had to train a new manager in my department. And the reason that was the unthinkable is for a different reason than you may think. No pun intended. So here's a little bit about me. I'm extremely passionate about teaching, coaching, and mentoring people. And the way that I am, I wanted to set this guy up for success because my mindset is when I'm training somebody, whether it's in or outside of work, I want them to be more prepared than I was. And I want them to ultimately become better than me. Good intentions, right? So tell me why any and everything that could have possibly went wrong during his training went wrong. Man, there were floods, hurricanes, fire watches, power outages. We both got cussed out by the department manager at the same time, twice. And the guy I was training had to work by my side every single day. Just like I was working every single day, he had to work every single day. Actually, actually, that's not completely true. He had to work by my side six out of seven days per week. I had to work seven days a week. So yeah, if your first month of work looked like that, would you want to stay there? Because I know I wouldn't. Well, fortunately, the guy that I was training was a very headstrong guy, and he didn't let the day-to-day, back-to-back, catastrophic events phase him. That's until they started putting grunt work on him. By the way, for the sake of the rest of this video, we're going to give this guy a name, because I don't want you to get confused, bro. So we're going to call him Cliff. His name is not actually Cliff. Just saying. So Cliff and I had a very important job, and we'd be working on super important projects together, right? Then, boom, you hear this. Uh, Cliff, uh, do you copy? While we were there, we had to wear these little radios, and that was how we communicated with our bosses and with the command center, but yeah. Cliff, do you copy? Uh, yeah, I copy. What's going on? Yeah, so we need you to come down to the basement and move all the waste by yourself with no help in the overwhelming heat. Then we need you to come back upstairs and move all these carts and rearrange them for us. Bro. Those carts were like 70 pounds on average, and Cliff was like 58 years old with a torn ACL. Yeah, then I would need you to help us physically remove all this stuck rubber from metal. 
Bro, do you know how many pounds of force it takes to remove stuck rubber from metal when it's been just sitting there for months? And I also want you to notice the key word that my boss said, can you help us? I want to make myself very clear when I say this. There was no us. The only help that Cliff had was me. And I had a million and one other things to do within our actual job description. So even I was unavailable. I would feel so bad that I found myself sneaking away from whatever I was doing to help Cliff lift that heavy behind rubber. Facts. But what really did it for Cliff was when he asked my boss a very legitimate question. There was a product that got mislabeled and all he wanted to know was where to put it. He was met with, well, what does it say, huh? What does it say? All right, then. That's, that's what it says. That's where you put it. Which, you know, just shows their blatant lack of attention because if something is mislabeled and you put it in the correct spot, then it's not freaking in the correct spot. You know what I mean? Well, that right there is what took Mr. Cliff over the edge. He looked at me and said these exact words. Reggie, it's been very nice working with you. Thank you for everything. I'm out. And you see, that disrespect that Cliff had just experienced, that was like an everyday thing to me. And that was like on the light side of disrespect. So it really wasn't a big deal to me. So I honestly just thought that Cliff was joking. Man, tell me why Cliff proceeded to pack his bags, clean all his cabinets out, all the file cabinets, all the snacks, everything he had, put his book bag on and started walking out the door. Something I had been dreaming of doing. Man, I don't think I've ever sprinted that fast in my life, and I still just barely caught up to him. He might have had a torn ACL, but your boy Cliff? Your boy Cliff was moving. Your boy Cliff was getting it. He was up in, he was in a mission to get up out of there. Real talk. But when I caught up to him, I was able to talk him into staying. And it was at that moment that I knew that I would be working every day indefinitely. Because my thoughts were, okay, well, yeah, I talked him out of it this time, but... What about next time? This guy is older. He just retired from his last job. He's just doing this job for the benefits and he has full control over the situation. So whenever he's done, he's gonna be done whether or not I try to influence him to stay or not. That was October, 2018. So now we're gonna fast forward to November, 2018. I'll never forget about this because this was right before Creed 2 came out and it was one of the few things in life that I was looking forward to because you know, I, I hated my life, you know. I just remember watching all the movie trailers and comparing my life to Adonis Creed's because the whole movie was centered around the biggest fight of his life. And at the time, I was going through the biggest fight of my life. And those two stories parallel because it was more than just me fighting a job that I hated. It was me fighting against myself on a daily basis. Just like in the movie, Creed's biggest fight wasn't Ivan Drago's son, but the fight against himself. That movie came out Thanksgiving 2018. Thanksgiving is also a holiday where most people spend time with their families, stuff their faces, watch football, play video games, and fall asleep. Or at least that's what my family does. But obviously, if I'm working every single day, it kind of makes it impossible for me to get that day off unless I request the day off. Theoretically speaking, of course. Well, when I asked for that day off, the response I got was, well, all right, well, we'll see if we can get you some coverage for that day. See if we can get a manager in here to work for you that day. I was like, which telepathically said, oh no, I'm getting this day off. I'm spending time with my family. I can't believe this. Uh-uh, no, y'all work me every single day. I never see my family. I'm seeing my family. Y'all gonna work me every single day then talk about something I can't have one day. Y'all tripping, man. Nah, we, I'm about to see my family. I'm sorry. Y'all gonna learn today. I guess the death stare that I gave my boss that day spoke to his soul or something because he was like, oh, no, 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 no. You, you, you got the day off. I mean, what? Wait a minute, you, you got the day off, bro. Don't worry about that. I'm just saying, I'm just saying we're we're covering you for that day. That that's all. That's all I'm saying. I was like, all right, well, I'm not gonna be here, so I'll figure that out. Then I walked out of that office. But what got me was they literally acted like it was pulling teeth for me to get one day off. I give you all of my days. I ask for one, and I can barely get that. So basically the way that I took that was, Reg, you do great and outstanding work for us all the time. You give us all of your time, all of your energy, all of your focus, and that is 
great, but all the time and effort and energy you put into this place is actually worthless because we still don't cherish you enough to actually give you a well-deserved day off that you're supposed to have off in the first place. And since it makes our lives easier to have you work instead of us so we can spend time with our families, which we already see anyways because we're already not working every single day like you are, we're going to continue to make it harder and harder for you to get a day off. We're going to make it as difficult as possible. Bro, mark my words. I didn't give them a choice. Man, I took my well-deserved day off. I spent time with my family. I stuffed my face. I played the game. I fell asleep a few times because, you know, that's, that's what life is all about. You know what I'm saying? But when I got back to work and I found out who covered me when I was gone, that was the last straw for me. Bro, I am not exaggerating in any way, shape, or form when I say this. They took a night shift manager and made him work the second half of my shift and his full shift. My man was back there in the office sleeping, bro. Sleeping. So you're telling me you got day shift guys who can actually cover me, who are usually spending all their time in the office not really doing that much, who have done the job before. You had a specialist, you had a business leader, and you had a business center manager. And you're telling me none of y'all, none of y'all could have covered me for that day, bro? All y'all refused to cover me that day, bro? Really? So because I wanted a day off, and no one who was actually here during the day wanted to actually cover me. In turn, I impacted someone of the lower management level that was, you know, congruent with me. It impacted him, but it didn't impact anybody above us. And they were only slightly above us. And they didn't want to step to the plate, say, hey, you know what? I'm here when you would normally be here anyways. Let me go ahead and bite the bullet and I'll cover you for 12 hours. That's cool. It's all good. It's all on me but they didn't do that. They didn't even have the decency to recommend that. All I thought was, how can we make our lives easier? Uh, night shift, that's what, that's what we're doing, night shift. We're putting him on days and that's final. I'll cover Reggie for six hours, but man, we're gonna get this night shift guy here. He's gonna cover the second half and I'm gonna get out of here early. Okay, bro, you got it. Their lack of decency really pissed me off. And on a real note, bro, that is not real leadership, period. So the overwhelming message of what I got from what I just said is I'm your boss, so my time is more important than yours. And my response to that was screw you. I'm going to show you just how important my time is. So that was when I started my elaborate escape plan. And I'm not exaggerating. I am not bragging. I'm just saying this was a genius idea. Like, I'm so proud of myself for this. <laughs> Quickly before I get into that story, if you get anything from this video, understand this. Know your worth, bro. So one day after work, man, one of my friends called me up and he was telling me about how he moved to a different state and how he just got hired on this gigantic, huge, amazing, futuristic facility and they're paying so much more than what they're paying at my job and blah, blah, blah. But he basically ended up saying, bro, you need to apply. Like, they need your skill set. They need your education. Come on. Come come on. We will welcome you with open arms. He was like this advocate for the company at the time. And he just started working there. I was all for it. You know what I'm saying? I was like, sign me up. Where do I apply? Tell me about this. Where, where is this place at, man? Uh, it's across the country. Across the what? I knew he was in another state. I didn't know he was across the freaking country, okay? Because he didn't specify what state he was in yet. I thought about it for a few days, but you know, the thinking about it didn't really last too long. And here's why. I was so miserable where I was that I was like, you know what? I don't care. Like, whatever risk I have to take, nothing can have more of a downfall than what I'm already having in my life. I already feel miserable. I already get upset, legitimately upset when I wake up every morning knowing I have to go another freaking day at work at this cutthroat, unforgiving, unfair facility. And man, I, I, and I'm, I'm not gonna make it sound like it was an easy decision because it wasn't, I hesitated a lot, but once I started to reflect on why I was hesitating, like I was hesitating hard, I was like, ugh. 
should I move across the country? Should I keep suffering? Like, man, I was hesitating. And I was like, you know, the reason that I'm hesitating so much is because over the past couple of years, I've been conditioned to think that I was only confined to my native state, which was which is North Carolina. And it was statements like, where else are you going to go in this vicinity and make money like this, huh? Huh? Where are you going to go? You're young. You can handle all the mental and physical stress on your body. You can handle this. Where else are you going to go and make this kind of money? It's not like you're going to move and go to a different state and, and go to where you don't have any friends and family. Where are you going to go? And it was that very language, that verbiage that stuck with me and conditioned me over time without me realizing that, man, I have to stay here around family, around friends. This is the only place I can be at where I make this type of salary. And when I came to the realization that I am not confined to any place at all and that I have to take control of my life and do what I wanna do and do what's best for my life despite what anybody thinks, despite what family, friends, or my coworkers thought, I had to do what was best for me. I had to do what made Reggie happy. Not them. I was done people pleasing. What can I do to make my life better? Because I've been living for everybody else for so freaking long, my head is spinning. What can I do for me? Once I realized that, man, it was like some external force just came upon me and it was like, I just knew that I had to move across the country and work at the same company that my friend was working at. I just knew because it was all I could think about. I went from dismissing the idea to only thinking about the idea. It was like clockwork. It kept me up at night. The three to four hours of sleep I was getting was looking more like one to two hours of sleep. Real talk. Every waking hour, that's all I could think about. I was like, Reggie, this, this right here, that's your escape plan. That is how you can live out what you've been dreaming of since you've stepped foot in this building. Right here, right now, going across the country and working for that company, that is your way out. Now this is where the story actually gets really funny and this is why my plan was so genius. When I came back from my mini two day vacation, I went and found Cliff and I was like, hey man, what they did while I was gone was unacceptable. To have a night shift manager cover me while I'm on vacation and make him cover his own shift, way out of line. I'm just, I'm letting you know this because I don't want to work for a company like that and you shouldn't either. And I'm just giving you a fair warning. I'm on my way out. This man looked me dead in the face and said, Reggie, you let me know what your last day is going to be and I'll leave too. Again, I thought bro was just joking, but within like one day of me submitting my resume, I already had a phone interview set up. And then from there I had another interview and then another interview. Bro, you can't tell me that God ain't good because those interviews all fell on days where I was able to get a half day off of work and I was able to interview and be fully present and not tired and not making excuses as to why I couldn't make it to the interview and saying that, oh, I have work. No, 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 no. God looked out for your boy. It even got to the point where I was like, you know what? If they call me at work, they call me at work. I'm going to answer. And guess what happened? I was at work one day, man. My phone started ringing. I was like, oh, it's them. Man, I didn't care where I was at. You best believe I was like, hello? Yeah, yeah, this is Reggie. What's up? Awesome. Well, we just want to let you know your interview went great, and we want to extend an offer to you. So, of course, as a recruiter saying this, there's loud fork trucks. There's, like, sounds of machines going on. And there's this one dude on the radio who's like, hold on one minute. Wait just one minute. The recruiter's like, oh, my God, I am so sorry. I, you need me to wait? I, I'll, I'll wait a minute. Is, is, this, is this a bad time? Is this, is this a bad time? And I was like, nope, this is not a bad time at all. That's just the guy on the radio. Don't listen to him. That was not me. I promise. Are you sure it's not a bad time? Because you sound like you're super busy. And I, I can call you back. Nope. Uh -uh. Let's talk about it right now. I'm here right now. I am free. Let's go. What do you got to say? <laughs> so anyways, they gave me my verbal offer. And then they told me that they would give me my written offer within 24 hours. First of all, it was not 24 hours, it was actually 48 hours, and that was the longest 48 hours I've ever had to experience in my entire life. Like, between the time of me actually waiting for my offer letter, my boss had already threatened my job, like, multiple times. He, he walked up to me one day because one of my operators, of all people, made one mistake, one simple mistake at that. And he walked up to me and said, Reggie, if that ever happens again, 
I'm sending you home. Can you live with that? Man, I looked at him straight in his eyes, like through his soul and said, yeah, I can live with that. Man, your boy was shook. He didn't know what to say. Then came the next day, which I will forever call game day. So a couple of days before game day, I called up Cliff and I told him what my exact plan was to leave and when I was expecting to get an offer letter, all of that good stuff. And I gave him the date that I genuinely thought that I was gonna be leaving, which happened to be game day. Except your boy miscalculated. Ah. I was off by one day because I forgot that I wanted to actually finish out my regular scheduled shift and tell my team goodbye properly. And I just forgot to tell Cliff that I changed my mind that I actually wanted to stay one more day just to finish out my regular scheduled shift because it's the right thing to do. So remember when I said I thought that Cliff was just joking? Yeah, um, your boy wasn't joking, bro. We shattered hopes and dreams that day. And this plan was so genius because no one suspected a thing. I didn't complain. I didn't show any signs of dissatisfaction. I didn't show any signs of anger, frustration, or being fed up. Nothing. I just, I was just going through the motions. I just looked like I was taking whatever BS came my way and just let it fall right off of me. Oh, yep. There you go. There you go. Yep. No big deal. I didn't even know Cliff was moving with me, but we were moving in silence, man. We both acted so unbothered by everything that was happening, so no one could tell that we were not happy where we were. So anyways, I started game day off by walking right up the stairs and printing my pre-typed resignation letter. And then I marched all the way to my boss's office and said, hey, we need to talk. And he's like, not right now, I'm very busy. I was like, no, 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 no. You, you need to have a minute for this. You're gonna wanna hear what I have to say and you're not gonna like it. And he was like, let me guess, you found another job. I was like, that's correct. As a matter of fact, I have three weeks to move all my stuff across the country. So with that said, tomorrow's gonna be my last day. Hand him the letter of resignation. Tell me that's not cold, bro. Sorry, I got a little, little excited, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, there was nothing he could say and there was nothing he could do. I had the control. But the funny thing about game day is, I genuinely forgot about Cliff. He said that he was gonna be running late that day because he had a doctor's appointment that morning. But then when I looked at my watch, I was like, all right now Cliff, it's, it's 5 p.m. now, the shift's almost over, where you at homeboy? Yo, as I was thinking that thought, my phone just starts going berserk and it's my boss calling me, the one that I just handed the letter of resignation, right? And he's like, Reggie, uh, uh, have you heard from Cliff? Um, no, not today, why? Well, I, I just received a text from him saying that he won't be returning to the company. D do you know anything about this? Bro, I don't know how I kept a straight face and didn't laugh that entire time this man was freaking out, but I just let him continue his sob story. We need to find out why he left. We need to find out what's wrong. Is he sick, Reggie? Does he need something? Does he need an accommodation? What does he need? We've gotta help this man. I was like, help? Where was your help when you made this man haul hundreds of pounds of rubber per day by himself with a torn ACL? Where was your help then? Now you're concerned? Man, when I got off the phone, I never laughed so hard in my life because I literally thought Cliff was just joking about leaving when I left. So we just hit the boss with the double whammy and he lost two managers in two days. Man, I was low-key jealous of Cliff, though, because he got to leave that, that hellacious place the whole day before I did. But I figured, you know, it's all good. I'll thug the last day out, and if anything happens that upsets me, I'll just walk out because I'm in control now. Tell me that's not cold. I learned a few things that day, and one is always know your worth, and don't wait for something to get unbearable to take action. And two... Never think that your boy Cliff is just playing because he's not. He's a very serious man and he's about that action. I called Cliff after work that day and we both laughed so hard. I mean, we were both literally in tears just laughing so hard because it was so funny because he didn't tell me, all right, bro, this is your last day. This is my last day too. It was like, all right, I'm just going ghost. Bye. <laughs> It was just so funny to me because I, I just saw how extreme the reactions were of the very people who have been making my life miserable for the past year and some change. 
and I didn't do anything spiteful here. I literally just did what was best for me, but what goes around comes around. So anyways, the very thing that I dreamt and fantasized about happened. I walked out of those doors, did not look back, and I was the happiest man in the world. And then I had to scramble to pack my bags and actually move within three weeks to move across the country. But bro, this video is getting very long. So I'm gonna cut it short right now because that is a story for another day. Anyway, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Continue to better yourself every day, man. And I will see you in the next video. Stay cold.